for being here. Um, we have Edra Soto with us this evening for a, a quick talk about her work, uh, followed by reception. Um, I'm really excited about the show and really excited to have her here. Um, thanks to Josh Ipple for um, putting the show together. He couldn't be here tonight, but um, we all get to benefit from that um, curating. So um, Edra went to SAIC, uh, followed by Skohegan um, uh, in about 2000, I think it was, um, and has been showing nationally and internationally um, with fury ever since then. Um, MCA, Columbia College, uh, all over Chicago uh, and beyond, um, including field projects in New York City uh, and other spaces that she can tell you about. Um, she also runs with her husband, Dan Sullivan, uh, a gallery out of, uh, who's yeah, in the back? out of their backyard. Um, it's a residential space that they've been running for a couple years now and doing a really excellent job of creating interesting alternative projects out of that space that they built uh, in the yard. Um, and yeah, um, let's see. Do I have anything? She's also received a whole bunch of grants and residencies. Um, all this information is on the CV in the gallery too if you want to find out more information in, in detail about any of that. Um, one last bit of information about Edra is she m makes a mean pineapple upside down cake um, <laughs> that, of course, we wouldn't ask her to bake for her own show. But if you um, have the privilege of being at one of uh, the exhibitions at their house, you might also have the privilege of enjoying some of that. So um, thanks for being here, Edra. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's going to be a short presentation. <laughs> I'm going to make it as painless as possible. Um, so I thought I'd talk about a little bit of um, um, background information about the exhibition that you're uh, witnessing, that you're watching. So it's called Excess of Joy. Um, I, I, I've been wanting for, I think, uh, and planning this exhibition for like a year in my head, not, not thinking about any particular place where it was going to be shown, but um, just the, the idea of making a record and, and recording my laughter uh, was sort of like an important part uh, that, I'm, that I'm very happy that I finally accomplished and, and it's, it's done. Um, so, uh, let's see. I guess I should start with this picture. Um, so this is, uh, this woman is called Iris Chacon, and she is uh, an exotic dancer from Puerto Rico. And many people from my generation are uh, very familiar with her, people that grew up in Puerto Rico, like me. Um, she was very famous in the 70s and 80s. And um, uh, it, well, when at, at that time I was, I was probably like ten or eleven, and uh, it, it was uh, very normal for uh, my family to have the the television on most of the time. <laughs> I grew up with TVs everywhere. Uh, and uh, this show was always, you know, a part of the things that I saw when I was growing up. And um, it, it, it came to my awareness as uh, at this, this part of my life, revisiting the, vi the videos of this, uh, of this show on YouTube and realizing what I was really looking at. Um, it, it, it was, um, it really put a lot of pieces together. I think I was, I always was fascinated by uh, symmetry and stages and I, I tend to connect that with the, uh, with uh, the church because I, I grew up in a, um, Catholic uh, high school, elementary and high school. So visiting that church and then connecting that um, uh, architecture with the uh, stages and the symmetry and and just this, the center of where things happen uh, was 
became important. So I start looking at um, at different kinds of stages and uh, things that were com components of those stages. And I found a really beautiful book at the Art Institute um, of Josephine Baker, this French dancer. And um, I was really fascinated by, by this amazing world that she was surrounded by. And, and did my first installation that tried to um, complement um, different disciplines, really just try, uh, you know, through to really um, bring everything together that I that I that I knew and was experiencing music and performance um, interaction, uh, and that was like the first type of social space that I I think I created um, in art, and. Um, but then later on, through the years, I realized that looking at Josephine Baker was very much uh, like a, a, a maybe like a false connection. I think uh, when I I saw Irish Chacon show, I realized that it was it was just very similar. All these um, uh, elements of glamour and she tends to use a lot of um, cultural, um, like uh, create that cultural experience uh, in in her show. It was really strange, but but she made that connection with Puerto Rico, and so so it's a very interesting subject to to study. And uh, so I'm gonna move to. Well, I guess an another important thing that that why I have this picture here is because. Um, she always danced with uh, a group of guys they're called the Chacon Dancers. She was also uh, a figure that everybody knew by her name, not by, uh, by her sexuality, but, but by her name first, which is something that is, is not the predominant thing no nowadays. When you see Latino women on TV, Sometimes they uh, they can be uh, presented or, or or as a as a decorative kind of subject and not uh, the person or the the presence that she has. So so I I really kind of uh, was I've been very intrigued by this by this personality. So this uh, this is a record that I have, that my mother had. So I look at this record for many years. And um, records were around my house all the time. So um, it's a very familiar and nostalgic um, you know, object. So, um, and somehow I, I always was fascinated by this, and I also didn't understand it because I was a kid, and I, I couldn't understand why her ass was in one side of the record. <laughs> you know, like it was just like questions like that that I could not understand. Um, there was a lot of um, experiences like that in my life uh, growing up in Puerto Rico, receiving a lot of impact from American culture, and not really understanding the context, you know. So growing up and then and then realizing all that is is just fascinating because it's kind of made me understand where I really coming from and what all that information meant and just uh, a new way of <laughs> bringing it to my work. So the my. Um, Let's see, let's talk about this mask. This was the, the first um, attempt of this, uh, of this work, one of the, the first ones, and this one right here. Um, let's see. Um, what will be the connection with the Irish Chacon with the mask? I started making these paintings um, that were relate, related to her show so uh, 
but I didn't want to reveal her face. Uh, I think I was more interested in, in the energy and uh, like the, the strength that she represents. So um, I, the, the mask as a uh, representation start appearing in my work in, through this um, older series that I, that I made. Uh, it was called The Greatest Companions. So I started making this connection with the dancers. Her dancers uh, are, are the companions, and my companions, in my case, are my dogs. And I was kind of making that connection and making these surreal paintings where I, I was making this, the stages that are from her show and... Um, kind of in, including uh, elements of my life. So they were very playful and surreal. I, and it's, I start painting again after many years of not painting. This is another one of these paintings that is uh, based on her show. And you can see, like, I'm not really revealing her because I'm not interested in, uh, in, in using her. Image. I think I think about more about the idea and the strength that she emanates or exudes. Um, so the, this stage, um, let's see. And then the stages have been taking a, a new turn, and these are sort of more of my recent work. After making or working on this mask mask series um, from XX of Joy, I, I, I start revisiting uh, the stages, and so I've been kind of busy working on this new series. I think that's all I brought. <laughs> you have any questions? <laughs> um, Okay. <laughs> can, can you say a little more about the form of that mask that is shown? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, I think they, uh, to, to me, they, they are uh, sort of stripped down um, things related to my, to my culture and um, I, I, be, I was teaching uh, high school for many years and uh, started looking at uh, African art and to teach about patterns and the culture and just was really excited and fascinated by uh, African uh, masks. And Puerto Ricans have their own traditional uh, masks, um, and and I think about those. Um, they're more colorful and have horns and things like that. They're uh, I think I'm, uh, there's some elements that I'm not that interested. But I I was just thinking about the idea of the mask and and the portrait. And just the realization that the mask is a portrait, um, and how to kind of humanize this this mask, so it's present and absent. Um, and this is I, it also I think it comes from the very basic idea of the the tragedy and and the comedy, and and just wanted to create something that celebrates life, simply celebrating life. Um, I consider myself a very fortunate person. I haven't gone through great tragedy. I'm a cancer survivor. <laughs> so things like that, that kind of make me think that um, I have no reason to, um, to complain. So. <laughs> So this, this is a, a celebration, plain and simple. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I listened to your record, and I was wondering, uh, who was making you laugh? Yeah. 
Well, um, I, re I revealed that I, there was, uh, yeah. Uh, so I, uh, I use uh, headphones and a microphone, and I watch on YouTube. I, I look for Eddie Murphy. <laughs> and, and really like immerse myself in the in the comedy, uh, but I, I didn't want to create. I, I I mean it's impossible to make a fake laugh. You cannot just fake that. <laughs> and um, also I I decide to do it after many years of like people commenting on my laughter, which I think is is um, part of like my Puerto Rican idiosyncratic way of being like you know people tend to be a little louder and I don't know the mannerisms are very different I just I just realized my difference being here you know because I'm it's just the way it is we are <laughs> it's different um, and so yes <laughs> Eddie Murphy <laughs> made me laugh, yeah. But I had to edit it. It's, um, it's like making a song. You, there's a lot of gaps, a lot of blank uh, um, silence, and have to listen to it a few times and, and get the right combination. But it was pretty direct and fun to make. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm very sorry for being late. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> yes. Could you talk a little bit about why you decided to not have virtually any color in the piece? Yeah, um, I, I thought about it too. And I, I, I thought for a moment that I was going to include pieces that had some color to interrupt the kind of um, monochromatic feel. But um, I, I was thinking that uh, the laughter itself occupies a lot of emotional space. Uh, and, and I think it's impossible not to think that there's pain behind joy. So, but I did want it to represent joy. So um, it's just a, a neutral space. So I didn't thought it, I needed to be that literal about using joyful colors. <laughs> and yeah, I also like uh, thinking about in general about like a, a certain the neutrality of of that call the. The dark just uh, give give some space to reflect. <laughs> Any other questions? I think some people would be interested in the process in terms of the material. Oh, how I made them? Yeah, yeah uh, I use uh, gouache which is like an opaque uh, watercolor uh, for the background and, and just uh, graphite, just pencil, and a lot of diffusers. It takes a lot of graphite uh, and uh, some patience, but it, it's, very, it's a very fun process, and I like to use very simple materials. <laughs> yes? With metal? Yeah, dark metal. Oh, the pictures maybe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the graphite is it really like, um, I, yeah, I, fi I find it very interesting as a material that can, can do so much. Um, it's reflective and um, it, it, depending where you're standing and where the light it, is hitting the drawing, it, it really have a lot of um, movement and uh, it's very organic. So, 
Thank you so much.